In this screencast, we're going to learn how to install JBoss tools into an existing Eclipse environment. So the first thing you got to do is install Eclipse IDE for Java EE developers. It might install in some of these other types of Eclipse, but by default, we certify or test on Java EE, Eclipse IDE for Java EE developers. So I'm going to download the Windows 32-bit solution. You can also pick 64-bit. And then that'll give you a file on disk, which I have already downloaded it, so you don't have to sit here and wait and watch me. And you can start up Eclipse just simply by drilling down and, and going into Eclipse.exe, double-clicking on that. This is Eclipse Indigo. I'm going to set up a, uh, let's go ahead and set up a brand new workspace just to be on the safe side here. And so this launches Eclipse, gets it up and running, and then in my case, gives me this nice welcome screen because I've not done anything really with this Eclipse environment just yet. I'm going to close, uh, I'm going to go to the workbench, maximize it. Now the easiest way to get JBoss tools into an Eclipse environment is to go to Help Eclipse Marketplace. And so the Eclipse Marketplace is a nice centralized location for you to download various plugins from various vendors. In this case I can see JRebel there or Glassfish there. I'm going to type in JBoss and hit go. And while that's searching, I'll come over here to the website so you can see some more about this. So marketplace.eclipse.org, you can say JBoss right here, JBoss Tools for Indigo. And uh, we're also involved with the Maven integration for Eclipse with WTP. That's actually part of JBoss Tools. And then we also have uh, JBoss Tools for Helios. So depending on what version of Eclipse you have, you want to, of course, uh, select the right version. And you can see that we've been very popular and we're uh, very active in the Eclipse community overall. Let's see here. I'm going to pick the JBoss Tools for Indigo. That's the one I have. This includes things like Hibernate as well as JSF editors, things for JAXRS and Java EE, but it also includes all the Maven integration we've done in this latest version of JBoss Tools. Now, if you didn't want to go through this process of individually installing everything, you could actually have uh, an out-of-the-box Eclipse installation with JBoss Tools and everything pre-bundled known as JBoss Developer Studio. And while that thing is calculating its requirements and dependencies, I'll walk you over there uh, so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Uh, so if you go to jboss.org slash developer, you'll get a, like, a few a videos, some tutorials, some other things. In this case, it's very focused on mobile development and cloud development, which you'll see once we have the JBoss tools installed. But what you'll do is click Download Developer Studio, and then you can pick the appropriate one for your operating system. 32-bit versions have the Visual Page Editor, which you um, I'll pop that open in a second, but there's a Visual Page Editor you might want to check out. But if you pick the 64-bit version, certainly you can use more memory on the machine, and 64-bit actually does use more memory on the machine. Uh, and you have to have a 64-bit 64, 64 OS with a 64-bit JVM. Um, but you lose the Visual Page Editor, because there's uh, that feature is based on a technology called Zool Runner, which is not available in 64-bit mode. So feel free to download those guys, and then you have everything pre-installed or pre-packaged together. All right, um, so there's everything checked. I'm going to take all, all the check boxes uh, because every time I leave something out, I forget something I want. So I take them all and we'll hit next. I'm going to accept the license terms and hit finish. And now it's going to go through a somewhat lengthy process of downloading um, all the individual component parts and pieces that it needs. This can take several moments, maybe several minutes, depending on your network speed and uh, your system speed. So we're going to just wait and wait, um, sit here and wait for it to finish. After a lengthy download process, you're then prompted with a warning message. You are installing software that contains unsigned content. This is fairly typical of an Eclipse plugin. Just hit OK, everything's fine. Once you've gone through the installation process, it'll prompt you for a restart. Go ahead and say restart now. And hit OK to the workspace prompt. And once restarted, you'll be prompted for uh, anonymous usage data. Please say yes. This information is very valuable to us because we use it to actually identify which operating systems and JVMs and combinations of screen sizes that we should certify against. So we spend a lot of effort getting everything QA'd to make sure you have a high quality experience when it comes to using JBoss Tools or JBoss Developer Studio. So this feedback is very valuable to us. So we have tens of thousands of people already providing feedback and we can definitely use yours as well. Now I'm going to click the Workbench button. And you'll notice the first thing you see when you drop into a JBoss Tools Enhanced Eclipse environment is the concept of JBoss Central. And this plugin specifically gives you a getting started experience, gives you uh, information so you can quickly get off the ground up and running as fast as we can possibly get you there. The other thing I want to point out is uh, you should switch to the JBoss Perspective. So if we go to Window, uh, Open Perspective, and Other, 
then we'll put you right into the JBoss perspective, hit JBoss there. And that basically just kind of sets up the environment so it's ready for Java E development, specifically targeting the JBoss server. If you look on the servers tab, you'll notice there's uh, no servers here yet to find. And one of the first things you'll need to do before you can install a server is get configured on a JDK. Now, if you have a JDK and that's your default in your path JVM, you're probably good at this point. But on this machine, I have to install the JDK separately or configure it separately. So I'm going to go to Window Preferences, JRE, Install JREs. And if you notice, there's the JRE right there, but I really need a JDK. I've always thought it's funny that Eclipse says, hey, you need a JRE, when we know you really kind of want a JDK for most development stuff. So I'm going to go down here. Uh, and I will grab where I know I have JDKs sitting around and in this case 32 bits since that's the version of the tools I'm dealing with here and hit finish and check that box and that'll be important later on when you want to start the server but a couple other things I want to mention before we leave this screen here the getting started experience you get with create projects these are specifically wizards dynamic web projects of wizard OpenShift applications of Wizards. So that's deployment to the cloud or starting with just a generic uh, Java Enterprise web project. However, if you want to start with a Maven project, these bottom six are actually Maven archetypes that we've actually uploaded to Maven Central. And you can specifically just click and get started immediately. So this will lay down a nice Maven project template that actually identifies all the dependencies that we believe you should be using. One of the greatest challenges with using Maven is typically figuring out your dependencies. So we'll start, we'll come back to that in a second. You also have news and blogs, really great information that you can use uh, that hopefully you'll find useful to you. And um, things like um, screencast, user form, you know, just great links there, and even some examples right here. So one of the things I'll mention on the screen is the software update tab. And this is where we have identified third parties that work well and in the context of Eclipse with JBoss tools. So we've spent the time to certify these third parties and help validate them against a series, uh, of course, our, our JVMs, our operating systems, and the way we like to do business. And this will allow you to actually use these tools in conjunction with our tools and, uh, and have them successfully work together. You can see Eclipse, eGet, uh, Subclips or Subversion, FindBugs, JSLint, PMD, TestNG, JRebel, Google, and Spring. And if I go back to the Getting Started tab, if you actually wish to use the Spring archetype as an example, you will notice that it actually has a checkbox that says you would need the um, uh, you would need uh, a JBoss application server. But in this case, I can build a Spring project with or without the Spring plugins being installed. As an example, if I click on the Google Web Toolkit project, again it'll tell me, hey, you're missing the app server, but you're also missing the Google plugin for Eclipse, and you really ought to have that because the experience is so much richer with the Google plugin for Eclipse. So what I'm going to do now is install a server using the new server wizard. I'm going to scroll down here to JBoss AS7. I have one on my local hard drive, already downloaded and unzipped. So let me pop up the browser there, kind of show you what we're talking about. So we, I've downloaded AS7.1 from the jboss.org slash jbossas downloads page. I've also downloaded the quick starts, and you can use those to import. And those are Maven-based projects also, and we've integrated Maven right into the imports. Uh, capability of Eclipse. So I'm going to hit the Browse button, and I need to get to, uh, let's see here, and where do I have, oh, I have that app server right there. So I'm going to pick it off the hard drive. All you got to do is pick its root directory after you unzip it, and of course map it to the right JDK, and then I can hit Finish here, and you notice there's the server dropped right into the Servers tab. I can hit Start, right click and hit start or debug. I'll just pick start for now. I can add and remove projects to it from that menu also. And then while that thing's cranking up, it only takes a few seconds, but I'm going to go ahead and hit the HTML5 project and get that archetype running. Notice that box is checked check now. We have a server installed. I'm going to hit next and I'm going to hit finish. Now there's a bunch of Maven properties on the next tab, but I didn't have to go to that point in the wizard. Everything is defaulted for you so you can get going immediately. If you already have a PO5 project name, and PO5 stands for plain old HTML5, it's part of our Aero Gear technology, then it'll actually prompt you to say you need to give a different project name if, it, if you already have one in this workspace. Have you noticed this has taken some time? So not only does it lay down an, uh, a Maven project for you on disk and import that, setting all the right facets for Eclipse and making sure all the dependencies are, are right but it has to it may have to download dependencies from the internet um, or from a maven repository that we can give you and then you then um, 
it updates your .m2 repository directory. So just keep that in mind that all the dependencies also have to get pulled in and that may take some time. So I'm going to hit finish here. It opens up the readme and I can just simply drill down on this project if I wish to and, and even look into something like the visual page editor for that specific page. Uh, double click on that HTML file and if you notice there's a split plane view, split pane view here and then there's nothing in the lower pane because this HTML file is set up for display equal none. So if I actually take that attribute off you can then see what it looks like here and while this isn't a perfect representation it does allow you to navigate around and look at this particular sample application you can see right here uh, this is an HTML5 application so it takes advantage of things like input type equal email or input type equal tell like telephone and on a mobile device you'll get the appropriate keyboards for email or telephone I'm gonna go ahead and run this application now right click on it and say run as on server I could also drag and drop it to the server I could also um, right click on the server and say add remove. Those are all different ways to push that guy over to the active server. If I drill down on the server itself, you can see there it is listed as, a, uh, as an application. And I, hit, I could go to add remove as another option. But here it is running inside the Eclipse internal browser. That is what the desktop application looks like. And I can also show you a ni another nice feature of JBoss Tools, specifically um, that is related to our focus on mobile and cloud-based development. And you can see right here, if I click on this little mobile browser sim icon, it'll load a, a mobile simulator that we've provided. So even you as a Windows user can kind of see what this iOS application might look like. Again, ready for the mobile web, taking advantage of HTML5 features. And you can see there's the look and feel. So a very different look and feel than what you get on the desktop version but available to you right here and now. You don't have to be running on a Mac to kind of see what that looks like. Uh, so that's a wonderful tool and we encourage you to go ahead and get started. And if you check out uh, the other videos in the series, you'll see examples of how we deal with Rich Faces, Google Web Toolkit. We also have a technology called Forge and some other features, including the Hibernate tooling that's part of this release. Thank you very much.